There's yttrium, ytterbium, actinium, rubidium, a boron, gadolinium, niobium, iridium, and strontium, and silicon, and silver, and samarium, and bismuth, chromium, lithium, beryllium, and barium. Welcome to the ethylene and addition polymer summary video. In this video, I'm just going to give a brief overview of the dot points, each dot point. So it's a quick summary of all the 10 dot points for this chapter. And you'll see the actual dot point and the video. So in this case, this means that this video, you know, video number one covers this dot point. So you'll see that for all 10. I'll go through the first dot point, which is construct word and balance equations. And when you construct word, um, balance and word equations, you need to make sure that you write your reactants and your products. So in this case, we've got our reactants here. These react, and they form these two products. You want to make sure you write your states, so liquid, liquid gas in this case. You want to make sure you have their, that they're balanced. This, in this case, they're balanced. You can just trust me on this. And you include the catalyst as well if necessary. In this case, a ZLS catalyst will increase the rate of reaction from those reactions. Also need to write the word equation. So this is decane. This is octane. And this is ethylene. There's the chemical formula on top and the word equation on the bottom. Uh, and this one is actually the um, fermentation of glucose to ethanol. And we actually see here we have our reactants have 12 hydrogens. Our product at the moment have a H5 and H, so six hydrogens. So at the moment this is not balanced, we want to make sure they're balanced. So we have to write a two in front to balance this out. Now we have two oxygens plus two, four oxygens here, and six oxygens here. So if we write a two in front of here, then the whole thing is balanced. That's the whole balancing part. And obviously states, this would be liquid, this would be gas, and this would be liquid. So you make sure whenever you write a balanced equation, you write all those different parts that I just mentioned. For this top point, it says identify the industrial source of the ethylene from the cracking of some of the fractions of petro petroleum. Petroleum was just all of this. Petroleum was the whole thing here. And it can be put into its fractions, so there's different fractions. The important ones that we're concerned with are the ethylene and the ethane parts, which are the gas fractions, this part here. And then octane, which is petrol. And that is your 8-carbon one, which is right here. And anything below that are ones which have more than 8 carbon in their chain. And they're usually the ones which we crack to get ethylene. So, for example, there's two different ways we can crack petroleum or parts of fractions of petroleum to get ethylene. There's catalytic cracking and thermal cracking. In catalytic cracking, we can start with something like, for example, decane, which has 10 carbon in its chain. We have a catalyst because it's called catalytic cracking. In this case, is Zeolite's catalyst. And we have 500 degrees Celsius. That makes petrol, so octane, and ethylene. So what we wanted, this is what we're trying to get, ethylene. So that's one way we can produce ethylene. Another way is, again, we start with the decane, 10 carbon uh, alkane. We have 750 degrees Celsius. And what we do is we produce hexane and 2 ethylene. So I was using only temperature, the other one using temperature and and, and, and the catalyst. So that's how we can get from petroleum, how we can get ethylene. And this one says, identify the ethylene because of its high reactivity of its double bond is really transformed into many useful products. So ethylene, all ethylene molecules have this double bond. And by breaking it, we can actually attach other things to it. And these are some of the things that we can create because of it. So for example, ethanol, which I'll go over in a second, ethylene oxide, milk chloride, styrene, mineral acetate, and ethylene glycol. So ethanol is a disinfectant, ethylene glycol an antifreeze, and the other ones are plastic. But for example, if we have our here our eth ethylene, and we break this double bond and allow the water molecule to attack the double bond and, and attach to it, we can go from ethylene to ethanol. So now we have this one broken, so it says double bond is broken. See, and at the double bond we have one hydrogen and one OH group attached, and that was from that water molecule. So now we can go from ethylene to ethanol. And that was done because of that high reactivity of the double bond from ethylene. So remember also the different types of products that we can produce that I just mentioned just now. Um, this was a comp so we had an appropriate alkane and appropriate alkene, and we compared the reactivity using bromine water. 
this was a practice we've done class. Now the appropriate alkane and alkene was actually cyclohexene and cyclohexane. And the reason why is because um, they're liquid at room temperature. If you want to put something into liquids, if it's gas, as the case of ethane and ethane, they would just escape. So we want to make sure we have something which is actually liquid. Cyclohexene and cyclohexane are actually liquid. Um, so this is the formula for cyclohexene, C6H12. And you need prac. This is just the simplified version of it. You can see we have our double bonds here for cyclohexene here. And no double bond for cyclohexane. Now we put them both into the actual solution. What happened in the case of cyclohexane, because of this higher activity of double bonds, you had bromine attached to it. The bromine attached to the double bond that broke it. And because it, the uh, cyclohexane, the alkane version, is less reactive, nothing happened. So it stayed the same, nothing attached. And we could see that something happened because the water color itself faded a bit because you had um, bromine actually relieve, and this is the actual chemical formula, C6H12, that's cyclohexene, plus bromine, goes into C6H12 bromine 2, so that's D-bromine cyclohexane, and that shows you that um, cyclohexene, so the alkene, is more reactive than the cyclohexane, the alkane. Identify ethylene that serves as a monomer from which polymers are made, so this is the ethylene, and when we break this double bond, we can attach it to more ethylenes. So ethylene is a monomer, but if we have it in the one long chain, each of these were, were a monomer, then we don't call it uh, ethylene anymore, we call it polyethylene, because poly means many, so now we've attached many ethylenes together. That's how ethylene can make a polymer. Identify polyethylene as an addition polymer and explain the meaning of this term. So what we'll I'll show you now is what happens when we connect to ethylenes. Again, these bonds get broken, double bonds get broken, and then they will connect in a second. And I'll bring that closer. So now they're connected, now we have polyethylene. And what you could just see is monomers joined together by adding end to end. That's what happened just now. And also, no atoms were lost. So just things were connected, the double bonds were broken, but nothing was lost. And that's the definition of an addition polymer, whereas it's always good to give an example of something else, the condensation polymer, which we'll cover in the next chapter. That's where monomers join together, just like in the addition polymer, same thing, end by end, but a small molecule is lost, which is usually water. Right, so addition polymer is they join end to end, but no molecule is lost. And that happens when ethylene, two ethylene monomers join together. You just have that double bond being broken, but nothing's been lost. Um, outline steps in the production of polyethylene as an example of a commercially industrial important polymer. That was video 7. Um, for low density, this is low density polyethylene, what I'll describe first. We had a peroxide radical, which was first neutral, but then we had the initiation stage. First stage was initiation, high pressure and 300 degrees Celsius. Broke one of these bonds, it broke them the bond. And then this was a radical which attacked which attacked the actual ethylene. It attached to it, and that caused the other part, the other chain, other side to become a radical. So now this was a radical, and this would attack the next part, and so on and so on. So this was the activation stage, because as soon as the actual uh, radical attached to the ethylene, it would make it, a, it the radical, and it would make more and more of these monomers attached end by end. The next stage would be the propagation stage. So all that means is you have more and more of these coming together. And I'm just going to show you three, but you can imagine there's many more than three. There might be thousands of them. And that's when it becomes really long as a propagation stage. And termination stage is when this stops. So when this process stops, and it can stop for two reasons. Either if we lower the pressure or the temp, or if two of these long chains, if they bump into each other, that also makes it stop. And when it comes to low density polyethylene, they're branched. They're not straight, but they have these branches coming off. So these are the branches here, these here. And for high density polyethylene, how we create high density polyethylene, we have a zirconium ion uh, in a big catalyst. The catalyst itself is called the metallocene catalyst, which is this whole thing here. What it does is actually grabs the ethylene, grabs it as double bond. It will break this double bond and attach it in a long chain, 
it's like assembly line, where this will be a really long chain of polyethylene, but it'll be straight. It'll be a linear polymer, just like this. So be, each of these is a, is a polymer, and it's a linear polymer. So those were the two different ways we can create both low density and high density polyethylene. Identify the commercial significant monomers, mineral chloride and styrene, they're both their systemat <coughs> systematic and common names. So we have vinyl chloride, this is its common name. This is the structure. You can see just it's basically just ethylene. We have one chloride substituted for the hydrogen. We have chloroethene, that's a systematic name. You need to know both the common and a systematic name and the structure. <coughs> Here we have styrene. Styrene is the common name. Um, ethyl benzene or phenyl ethane, these are the systematic names, you need to know both of those. And again, the structure is just this, we have one hydrogen being substituted for this huge benzene ring. And yes, for this dot point, we need to know this. And when they attach end by end, so we have here one chloroethene, here another chloroethene, or vinyl chloride, if they end, attach end to end, we call it the polyvinyl chloride. <coughs> here we have two benzene, once, if they attach end to end, we call it polystyrene. Not styrene, but polystyrene. This was the analyzing the model. So all you had to do, you played around probably in, in class. We had a model of ethylene and you modeled um, how the process worked. So you would have first you've broken all these double bonds. And then you would have attached them end by end, which I'll do in a second. And that was the whole idea of just showing how it works. If you do the hands-on activity, you're more likely to be able to understand the topic. That's why you would have modeled it in class. Or maybe you watched a computer simulation. It would have been a very similar reason as well. That's your modeling using ball and stick figures. Not figures, but just the actual atoms as balls. Um, last is describe the uses of polymers made from the above monomers in terms of their properties. So for, them, for example, high density polyethylene, we said it was a linear molecule, which means it has these strong bonds in between all of the actual chains. That gives it high tensile strength and that is why it's used for hard plastics. We have low density polyethylene. It had all of these branches which means we can't stack them so well, they can't have these strong bonds because it's not one after the other. That makes it less strong but more flexible. That's why it's used in sandwich bags for example, the ones which have to be quite flexible. We've got polystyrene Polystyrene have these big rings, these really big rings, and they make it really stiff and, st and strong and tough. Um, that's why it also gets used for hard plastics. That benzene ring makes it quite stiff and tough. This is poly polyvinyl chloride, and they have these chemical these chlorine groups, which make it chemical resistant. And if we add something called plasticizers, so plasticizers are just things that would add additional features. If we add plasticizers to this polyvinyl chloride, we can make it water resistant, heat resistant, and flexible. And that's why it gets used for things like tubing pipes because of that flexibility and that water resistant and chemical resistant nature and also for raincoats as well. So hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.